Yeah, it would be a half circle and kind of like the hand motion up to you. Those are good. Before we talk about arcs, we do have to talk about the angles a little bit. So I would like you to write central angle, and then you do need to make a circle. And then we're going to make a central angle on top of that circle. So central angle, it's an angle whose vertex is on the center of the circle. And they named it in a way that makes it pretty easy to remember. Central angle on the center. So add this to your drawing. Make your circle. The center is B. And then angle ABC is on that. So that is a central angle. And again, just remember that means the center is on there. And a circle could have more than one central angle drawn at a time. But when you look at them, you just kind of look at them one at a time. And remember, angles, you always name those using our three letters. So this would be angle A, B, C. Or what else could we call it? Yeah, C, B, A would also be fine. Why does B go in the middle? Yeah, vertex needs to go in the middle, but the other two... Now this you can definitely shorten up in your notes somehow if you want to. The sum of the central angles of a circle with no interior points in common is 360. So as long as those central angles aren't overlapping at all, when you add them all up, you're going to get 360. Which again, that's probably really easy for you to remember because you already associate the sum of the angles of circle with 360, which is exactly what this is talking about. Use that definition for arc, and you all were pretty good with what you're saying earlier. I'm just going to call it a portion of a circle defined by two endpoints. Very soon, you're not trying to work on your homework. You're still taking notes right now, are you? Okay. So a portion of a circle defined by two endpoints. You can also call it like a curved line, part of a circle. We're going to have three types of arcs. So I would like you to draw what you see up there. So another circle. What is MPO? That would be a central angle. So you're going to make a circle P. On circle P, you're going to have central angle MPO. And then out here, you're going to have point N. And we'll do a little bit with that in a later on. But right now, let's draw to see. First type of arc is called a major arc. That was pretty important, right? The names on these I think can help you remember that, remember what they mean. 
think major, you probably think big or important. That kind of fits here. If it's a major arc, it's exterior, the central angle, and it's greater than 108. So they're the bigger ones. To me, your major, it's going to think bigger. Um, yeah, you kind of want it to be. So an example of what one of these could be, it's exterior the central angle. So our central angle is here, so a major arc would be on the outside. So like M, N, O. So what I just highlighted up there, that would be a major arc because it's outside of the central angle. And we name it, I'm just going to say exactly what I wrote. It's going to be M, N, O, and then I'm just going to put a curved line over the top. So that tells me that that is arc and then O. We start at M, go to N, go to O. If it's an arc, it's around the circle. You just follow the points. If we got a major arc, you know what we might have next. Yeah. And it's just the opposite of the major. It's interior of the central angle, and it's less than 108. Interior of the central angle, less than 108. <coughs> so do you see what might be an example of a minor arc on our figure? Yep. So if I go from M to O, <coughs> that would be an example of a minor arc. So I just call that MO. And then we've got one more special type. It's called a semicircle. I think somebody threw this term out there earlier. The semicircle is pretty specific. The endpoints need to be on a diameter, and it's ex equal to exactly 108. So what portion of a circle is a semicircle? Yeah, it's exactly half. So this is where N is going to come into play. On your circle, go ahead and extend this so it goes all the way through now. So then I could say that arc M O N. is a semicircle. No. And you'll know why. You can kind of see that I made them all the exact same way. Which one's different? What's different about it? And that's the rule. Two letters are used to name minor arcs. Three are used to name a semicircle or a major arc. And that is how it always needs to be. Benefits of that, if you see the name of an arc and it's only got two letters, you know without a doubt it's supposed to be a minor arc. And if it's got three, and then it's a semicircle or a major arc, and you just kind of look at the figure to tell which it is. If it's half a circle, or it's on the diameter, it's a semi. If it's bigger than that, it's a major. So again, two letters for a minor. Three means it's semi, circle, or a major.
measuring needs. Uh, as far as the circle, I think you can just look at it. I don't think you'll need to actually write this down. But do write down the rules. So don't copy the figure, but write this. A minor arc equals its central angle. It's not as easy as it gets. A minor arc equals its central angle. So if you know one, the other one's the exact same thing. So in this case, I've shown that that central angle is 68. So what's this arc from here to here? 68. Okay, they are one and the same. You'll probably figure this out on your own. The major arc is 360 minus the central angle. The major <coughs> arc is 360 minus the central angle. Yeah. What? So the work that she did there, she took 360 minus 68, got 292. So that means this portion, all the way around it, from this point to this point has a measure of 292 degrees. And what has to happen is the whole thing has to equal 360. So you kind of check it, it's 292 plus 68. Yeah, that is 360. Okay. So that's how you work with those. <laughs> Next term is adjacent arcs, and that word adjacent we see all the time. In your own words, what would you say about adjacent? Next to. Okay, next to, very good. This means the same thing here. If they're adjacent arcs, they have exactly one point in common. So that means they touch, but they don't overlap by more than just that one single point. Now again, I think you're okay with just looking at the circle. I don't think you need to copy it down. I just feel like you really do need to. So what this could be like is if I give you this, I've got two central angles from here to here, from here to here. What do you think this whole arc containing the two of them from here to here is going to have to equal then? Exactly. And it's just that basic idea that we've had all along. If you've got the two parts, we want to get the whole thing. And if we wanted to go the other way, like I knew the whole thing, then I'd subtract. So I'd say 23 plus 47, and what's that become? 7. And the very last thing, a way to figure out our length. The arc length is the distance between an endpoint along an arc measured in linear units. And I do want to make sure that you understand there is a difference between arc measure and arc length. Okay? Arc measure is its measure in degrees. Arc length is going to be in units like inches or feet, things that you would use to measure a line. Okay. So make sure you get that distinction between those two. They ask for measure, it's in degrees. They ask for length, it's going to be in just regular old units that you'd use for a lot. And our formula for this is x over 360 times 2 pi r. In that case, x equals the central angle. <clears throat> Can you figure out where that formula comes from by looking at it? Okay, so this part's circumference. And what's this? Percentage is a good term to fit there. That's how much of a circle you have. So you don't have the 